Making life worth living and retirement worth having is about practically the laws of our great land. You see, in the world we have people who think that federal law and international human rights law means nothing in the local marketplace. What I mean by that is that there are people in this world who literally think that they have the lawful right to do things to other people's personhood. They feel they have the right to destroy a person's property and infiltrate their homes. And there are people who literally feel that if they don't stop someone in their lawful right and pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness in this land, that they are somehow illegal before the Lord in heaven. Now let's talk about that a minute because I have family members who I talk about regularly and yet my videos get edited by someone who is not me illegally violating my intellectual rights as a creative studio to talk about things as a reporter and journalist and observer of life. To explain what's going on for me is not really important to anyone listening, but openly when we talk about the actual concepts that are going on for my life, it might make more sense to a person like you in your life. You see, if we have police who literally unlock our homes, go in and take our property, our medications, our information, then that means that the police have violated federal law and international human rights law not to mention some civil liberties laws that were put in place to protect people from this concept of mobbing. You see, mobbing is when a people literally make a decision as a group to decide who is okay in front of the Lord and who is not. Now, what comes to mind to most practically minded people is the Nazism that was going on in Germany that extinguished practically a literally thousands of important people in the land of God. The Jews were exterminated by this very principle, that one man thought he had the lawful right to ruin a life, and then it became a national movement. Let's ruin the lives of these types of people. Let's make them lesser than important in the land of the Lord. Now, how do you think that went over for God? Yes, he allowed it to happen. He allowed the monsters to be in this world. He allowed the monsters to be in fissures. He allowed people to do things like that in Florida and children to run into schools with guns. Why? Because the Lord knows that there are people who need to see and be slammed with the violence of other people's minds. You see, other people's minds are really the problem. The people in alignment with God are like the young women that I've met, not at all. They are actually the seasoned people that you go and visit with in a church. Those old folks, those senior citizens, those folks over 60 in their 70s, close to 80, usually in their 70s are the wisest, are literally the ones who understand God because they're thinking a lot about their lives, they're losing friends and loved ones at their age, and openly they're losing life partners, which makes them remember how important God has to become because they're now alone in life. When I visit churches, the loveliest of people are always the elderly who are willing to step out of their comfort zones and welcome a stranger into their fold. The problem is that the younger men and the younger women don't know how to do that. I literally have watched many people struggle with how to be hospitable because they don't officially represent the company of the Lord. They don't officially represent the organization or non for profit that's receiving federally granted opportunities to be a non for profit, regardless of whether they are a church of 12, like I visited yesterday, or a church of thousands, 12,000, in fact, like some of the mega churches in Indianapolis. At least that's what they say their numbers are. That's certainly not the number of people in attendance. Their auditoriums aren't that large. But if they have four and five services, they can seat a couple thousand. That means something entirely. If they have a building that's so monstrous, they've got a couple different services going on literally so that they can move people to different parts of the community. That's something else entirely. What I'm looking for here, though, people, is an understanding of what creates a Nazism-like oriented populace. Now you're thinking, why at Christmas time would it be literally be talking about such a horrible group in history?
Because if we get too literally far off from history in our mindset and the horrible things that have occurred by some crazy man thinking he was more powerful than God, then we really lose our rights in this world. You see, my rights matter only to me, but your rights matter to you. I literally have family that keep violating federal law. They keep making phone calls on my business. They keep making calls about my storage unit that I lawfully have a legal document saying I am the only one authorized to go in. I have sisters who've stolen copies of my keys by medicating me in some way in food that they say is supposed to be safe. Or is it really someone else doing it in my mom's old folks home, making sure that I fall asleep faster so they can paw their way through my property? I literally had a mother allow a 20-year-old security guard tell me that I wasn't able to walk out of that place at 3 in the morning to go and literally walk all the way to Fisher's to get my vehicle. Now that young pissed me off, young man pissed me off so much I lit into him with a literal litany of explicitives because in proper care of my life, I have the right to write down anything I see as odd, unusual, or worse for my life. You see, self-protection is something that is allowed underneath federal law, and I don't have to justify myself to some 20-year-old of why I'm leaving my mother sound asleep happily in la-la land, protecting her health to allow her to sleep to her normal wake time, which is in the middle of the morning, so that I can produce for myself a ride by making a few phone calls to Uber or elsewhere in a place nearby that doesn't crap on my rights. Now, when I talk about what happened is literally that executive director, allegedly, according to my mother, who is a pathological liar, told me that I could not come back to that property. What that meant was that all of my personal belongings that had been in my vehicle that were in my mother's home got pilfered through by my mother. Do you understand that she took a pair of my man's military pants, took out the hems, pulled the strings from them and literally re-sewed them as if she had some lawful right to treat me as if I was a two-year-old? Do you know that she put her hands through every box that I had? She reorganized everything I did and openly she has continued to believe that because she paid for something in some way in my life, at some point in my life with my father's income and resources, that somehow she has the lawful right to do things like this. It doesn't matter to her that my underwear that she purchased out of a requirement in her mind that she had to replace things has now been stolen lawfully from my storage unit, where I left it in a suitcase because I wanted it for the holiday time, nice, clean, and ready to go. It doesn't matter that my siblings have gone in and out of my storage unit illegally so, or some police officer who thought he just messed my life over. You see, the only people who can get into a storage unit literally is the storage unit people themselves who may have master keys to the locks that we put on our storage units or a police officer who has the ability to open locks because they have master keys or possibly a family member who illegally and unlawfully took copies of my keys when I slept on a sofa in their home. You see, there are people who literally allow you to stay in their houses as relatives, but the minute you go out and leave a bag somewhere, they think somehow, under federal law, it gives them rights to open your personal property and get into them and take things. There are other people who are so ill in their mind that they really think that it's okay for them to put their to paw their way into your clothing that is literally still on your body, take out your wallets, take out important notes you've set in your wallets to protect your life with the next opportunity of networking and things like that, and steal that from you completely, and put other documents into your wallets. There are other people who think they have the lawful right to go into a total stranger's home or a neighbor's home and open up their bags and steal their federally protected life insurance policy information. You see, this is the illness in the land. It is not just an illness in the people who are supposed to protect the law. It is literally an illness in people all across the land. Now let's talk about the bloody battles that are going on in some of the harsher parts of America. What is that about? It's because someone failed to teach them our federal laws. Someone failed to remind them of international rights and human acts of kindness and love and care. You see, in this land of Christ, which is what we're celebrating right now at Christmas, people have totally forgot the purpose of why Jesus was born 
and literally why Jesus died for our sins. But you have to be a person of faith to care about that. And there are plenty of people who profess to be Christian but never go to a church service ever. I've got a sister who literally refused to talk about God because I'm pretty sure she knows she's off track in her life with him, and that's why she won't talk about him. I've got another who can literally quote Bible verses all day long, but she violated federal rights. She stole a business card. She called with her friends and made all sorts of litigation abuse on a man's life. Practically, in her version concept of God. But openly, does a federal agent go into her home and take her shit? No. What do they do? They ruin a man's life who has been private, who's been stealth, who's been enjoying his life and making a modest living and tracking all his taxes. And what did that person do? She literally went into that home, stole all the federally protected documents like she had some right because simply she was allowed a key just in case, God forbid, the man died in the night. You see, there are people who hold our keys to our homes, like neighbors we trust and other things, that literally will lie, steal, and cheat us blind without us ever literally knowing it. We make the mistake of who we trust because we don't ask God whether it's the right decision. And sometimes we ask God and he said, yeah, go ahead, we have to prove to you that this is not the right person to give it to you. We have to prove to you the illness in the land by allowing them to get caught by police. But openly, isn't that what happens? That God will only help certain people is not true. That openly only those who submit fully to the Lord get protected, usually, from the illness of man. You see, the illness of man is to forget that the Lord creates all life. That the God in heaven was born unto this little earth to provide us the safety and the life that we long to live based on the seed of our soul that God literally put within us when he mixed that chemistry and allowed our parents to get together and to make a practical child. You see, if we're going to say that the Lord made Jesus Christ, then we've got to realize that the Lord is powerful enough to put a seed between two people, to have that chemical mix to go on in a way, and it's not right to say chemical, but that chromosomal and all that other hormonal and any other concept of science that you might have got in sixth grade science class when it was a little too early to get it all. But the reality is that when we talk about this in a silly way, people start to take notice. That if you are someone who is a person of faith, regardless of the Lord name you choose to honor a loving, powerful, omnipotent, all-knowing, all creating vehicle of this world and you literally have the belief because of all the science and all the nature that you see that practically there has to be some sort of architectural design here there has to be some sort of divine architecture as it's often called and the scientists actually proved it almost down to the tiniest of degree that it is a science and it is a math that openly just maybe just maybe in life you might think that your little concept of the world is so off track that you might stop your own bad behavior in other people's lives. You see, when you practically start to play God in someone's life, your own life starts to get monkeyed with a little bit. You see, when you produce ill will towards someone and involve total strangers in a relationship that should have been handled face to face, you produce an illness in other people. When you involve people to infiltrate a person's rightful personhood in the name of the Lord, such as thinking that you'll get away with shaving their legs, which is in fact a hate crime under federal law, you produce a hate in them for the people who are supposed to protect our lives from harm. When you infiltrate someone's storage unit that they have lawfully paid for up until the point of being hazed and harassed out of an opportunity in life of income and money by his siblings or by other people who have decided to produce a Nazi-like attack on a human being's life in group or in mass or in mobbing, whether it's done in mobbing. Mobbing is really a military term, but we can call it hazing and harassment. We can call it bullying of adults. We can openly call it a lot of things, but it is not done by a loving God. It is done by people who literally think that God doesn't really know what he created in this world. It is done by a people who are being immoral underneath the laws of the Lord in the Bible that says love is the most important gift we give others, but more importantly, in terms of thou shall not steal, thou shall not commit 
murder, thou shalt not do these things. Yet people murder people all the time in their language, online and offline. I'm sure I've been guilty of bad-mouthing a man or two in my life and business because I just found their behavior abhorrent. But it was up to that individual to either tell me to shut up or literally to see my own illness in that moment or for me to repent in front of people. I have apologized to one gal at one time for not being thoughtful about what she was going through in her struggle and her emotions. I have felt guilty about that a long time, but I released it when I apologized to her. But in truth, when we talk about apologies, I've literally been told that I might be forgiven by someone, and I just want to say, okay, so Jesus forgave your sins, but you're so much more omnipotent and more all-knowing and all-purposeful than the loving Lord in heaven that you can't sit your ass down like a mature adult, talk to me about what the hell is going on, and openly give me any form of forgiveness because in your mind, something I did was so outlandish that I'm not worthy of forgiveness in this world. Now, I could talk about the gal I love, I could talk about the people in my family, but none of those things mean anything to you in your life, especially if I've never met you professionally or I've never interacted with you personally. If I have interacted with you professionally, you know that I'm normally a consummate professional, normally very honorable, normally introducing you to other people, normally referring people. If you know me personally, then you know that I'm a metaphysical Christian, a Confucius, a Mencius practitioner, someone who loves Kabbalah and other aspects of the Lord that have been brought down in different generations and different type of lineages in the Jewish community, that you know that my loving soul doesn't harm a fly. But in truth, there are people who want to monsterize my life and tell me that I don't have the lawful rights to my personhood, meaning my body, and there are people who have raped my life. But do you really care? No, because it didn't happen to you. Most people can't even fathom what that's like. The reality is that the reason that mobbing and stalking and all these things literally continue to happen is because the persistency of it, the group of people that attack like the Nazis did in a sort of mob-oriented way, literally forget that they are not representatives of the Lord in those moments. They can moralistically intrude on other people's lives and their minds. They can believe that God has told them to do certain things like this. But practically, I'm pretty sure God did not tell Hitler to go after the Jews and to kill them all in extermination camps. But how different is that now today? We may not use an extermination can. We certainly have murderous people in this land. But what I'm talking about is how technology can be used to murder a person's life, to steal their property from them by unlocking a lock that's not lawfully a person's lock to unlock in the first place. There are people who literally think that they're so righteous in their souls that God is giving them lawful right to violate federal law, to violate international human rights law, which says we have the right to our property, we have the right to decide who our physician is going to be, and literally we have the right to do a lot of things underneath those 27 some uh, tenets of that international declaration of human rights. But in our land, we sort of forget what human rights are for other people. We only want to worry about human rights for ourselves. Now you can guess by the and hear by the tone of my voice that I'm sort of being a little bit like Andy Rooney, who is an old-time reporter who is now long, no longer with us in this world. But he used to talk for 60 Minutes, which was a show that my family listened to, I believe, on a Sunday night during the supper hour. I can remember sitting in our kitchen in Wheaton and listening to it on the little black and white television that we had in that place because we went and visited a spot and they gifted us a television just because we went to visit this little place. That little TV ended up in my bedroom eventually in teenage years, but openly I remember those black and white television sets. I'm old enough to know it. I remember walkie-talkies we had as a kid that were practically good enough to use in the vehicle like a CB radio. Now we have crap toys in this land, but openly we've got to import something from the people that we send food to. You see, in order for us to present sanctions to the world, all we have to do is cut off the food source for people. But we also have people illegally here from the Middle East who are trying to ruin our food and literally trying to destroy our waterways with illegally putting the improper type of animals into those systems. You see, when we protect ourselves in this land, it's not about carrying a gun. It's about having the moral high ground to say, I am not the Lord of this person's life, period. 
Now, why am I talking about the Lord? Because it's Christmas time. And Christmas is about love. It's about gifting. It's about service. It's about honoring the Lord who was born unto this time period in our historical recollection of him, which we all know has, is a fictional date in time. Anyone who's been to Bible study in the teenage years knows that they move Christmas to Christmas time now when it really was, I believe, midsummer. But openly, we'd have to have some historians, some theologians, some folks from collegiate professors like Cambridge who study religion, who studied the old text, who know the calendar of the year, to know that Christmas in winter is not really what we did, but we did it probably long ago to produce for us some holidays to get us out of the elements. And I've said this before. Now, practically, I'm talking about the Lord. I'm saying, who is Lord of your life, period? You see, the Lord of your life is the person in your life that you allow in your life, the people that you choose to be in your life, the Lord in heaven, the God the faith practice, the faith principles, the philosophical aspects of your life. But if thou shall not steal and thou shall not murder and thou shall only love is a part of your life, then you don't participate in the harming of other people's lives. You see, it's when we start to get into this slippery slope of believing where our rights begin and end that get people into little federal trouble. You see, federal law protects our medical records. Federal law protects our rights to privacy in seeking counsel and care and other aspects of our life. But local folks don't really seem to care about federal law. I literally know that there are many people in the judges set that just violate federal law left and right without thinking about human rights law at all. And openly, we have to wonder how the hell did they become those positions in the first place. But I'm talking about the reality of your life, and you think I'm only talking about the reality of my life. No, I'm talking about the reality of your life, that at any moment, an unlawful judge could take your rights away and tell you have to do certain things. And openly, even if I say it as a reporter, I risk some snot-nosed reporter or some other police person lying to a judge and giving them lawful rights to voyeur on my life because I'm out loud and proud on the internet as sort of a public figure, but all I'm trying to do produce for me is a literal job. You see, in order to get a job today, we must actually have an online portfolio, an online presence. But there are people who want to interfere with our right to do that because there are technology companies that take our money literally and then don't allow us the lawful right to our exposure that we're paying for. Because we don't really know how much exposure we're getting, because why? The internet is an invisible technology that practically only works if it works in our phone when we access it, or it works in our computer when we go there. And openly, there are technology companies that can just say, we're going to let some people have technology, like Tesla, or we're going to allow no one to have technology. Or we're going to be more like Tesla's intention, which was, I'm going to allow everyone to have free energy in this world. And what happened to him? He's now the name of a popular car that's very expensive that may save all sorts of money during the year. But openly, we're producing a new energy stream that may or may not be free. Now, practically, I'm talking about a lot of illogical things to some people's mindsets. But to others, we have to go back to human rights law. I'm a big proponent of human rights law. I'm a huge proponent of human rights law for my own self. What about you? Are you a proponent of human rights law for your life? Do you want to be safe under federal law in terms of your personhood, your property, and your paperwork? Do you literally feel that you have the right to take any of those opportunities away from another human being based on some faith principle? Or are you really understanding the law, that the law applies to all people of all races, of all ethnicities, of all genders, of all sexualities, of all everything openly because why? Because the God that we celebrate at this time of year literally made it all. Now practically those who steal will not get honors in heaven. The Lord says thou shall not steal. Practically those that murder a life, whether it be physically murder or intellectually, spiritually, and technologically murder a life, will not inherit the earth in terms of heavenly 
crowns and other things, but openly you have to be a person of faith, understanding enough about the Bible, understanding enough about the historic works that we don't even have access to because they decided at the Treaty of Nursia, we'll just take this out, nobody needs to read this part. And yet we have the common book of prayer and other books that are allowed in other parts of faith that we might need to learn something from. Now, practically, I'm talking a long time because only the people who are interested in listening will listen this long, but practically, we multitask all the time at the holiday time. But I'm talking about real rights in this world, the right to love and pursue who we love without someone lying to them about our bodies or lying to them about our illnesses or lying to them about our rights to pursue them without hazing and harassment like a Nazi soldier would do to someone. You see, Nazism isn't so far off from these haters in this world. These haters that produce guns and go into places and blow them up and shoot people illegally. We all are in great shock when that continues to happen. I'm like, this is a simple fix. Start literally talking about the laws at the youngest of age. Make sure every student and child knows that constitution backwards and forwards, literally to the point that they know it rote for rote, word for word that thou shall not kill is amongst the highest in the land of the Lord, but the second highest is thou shall not steal and murder a person's life with any form of technology, whether it be a gun, a computer, or a physical science <coughs> that physicians do to destroy lives. You see, practically some illness in the world is created by God, is it not? Because the Lord in heaven creates all illness, does he not? You see, we can't say that the Lord of God of all is ill-willed. What we can say, which I said to a woman in church the other day, that cancer is something that God produces to put people in a point of humility. Just like the crazy animals of the foreign lands that other people have to deal with, thankfully in America, for the most part, we have subdued those wild beasts to the populations of the jungles or the forests, and we sort of have an understanding of what lives there if we've done our homework and research before we go travel on a holiday vacation, so we don't get bit in the ass by a snake by bending over to take a crap because we have no toilets in public places. But openly, I'm making a joke, but I'm also saying, look, people. Nazism is not far off from the mentalities of people who think they literally have the right to monitor, to manage, to manhandle a person's life that they lawfully have no legal rights to whatsoever, and their attempt to gain those lawful rights is ill-willed and illegal in the house of the Lord. Now, the house of the Lord is practically what I talk about a lot these days. Why? Because I might have some gifts and I might not. I might just like to sell religion, but more importantly, I like to sell America. My father, my late father, was a great Republican in his mind. My mother thinks she's a Republican and loves Trump. Fine. I don't give a care. But openly, what I love about America is what most people love, the right to pursue love, liberty, and happiness without illegal police or people taking away those lawful rights. You see, under human rights law, we have the right to water, we have the right to toilets, we have the right practically to a lot of things. We have the right to be not militarized, we have the right to travel, we have the right to assembly, we have the right to get with people we long to see, and openly, underneath federal law, we have those rights too. The entire U.S. Constitution protects just about everything we own in this world. And how do we establish ownership? It's not always based on payment. There's two ways we establish ownership of certain property. One, we personally paid for it and earned it from our own revenue generational uh, activities and creating an income for our lives. That establishes ownership. Or two, the lawful documents that create the legal lawful ownership of our home, of our traveling car, of other property of significant value. The slippery slope people get into is believing that if they can open a locked door, they can steal something, they can pretend it's theirs. Because who documents every single little thing that they purchase? 
which is why I encourage people in their 30s and 40s to start weeding out the crap they don't need. It gets harder and harder to do in your old age, and literally, if you live with a hoarder, it's a miserable experience. But people have collections. They collect gifts from people. They establish classrooms. They put things in it to decorate. They openly have a lot of things that have value more to other people sometimes than literally to themselves, but then we have people in the world who can't receive a gift. They are literally so abhorrent about receiving a loving gift from someone who loves them that they can't handle it, but let's be clear about what a gift is. A gift is a personal piece of property that's been purchased by someone and literally said, here you go. We are now finished with the gift-giving process. A gift is not something that we give and then take back. A gift is not something that we promise and then don't do. A gift literally is a gift of our own honor to someone else. So when a person thinks they have the right to steal anything like that from another human being, not only have they failed the Lord in heaven to recognize his law of thou shall not steal, that openly they have failed to recognize human rights law that says we have rights to our own property without forcible seizure and removal of those lawful rights in this land. That we also have federal law rights that say we have the right to our personhood and our paperwork and our property underneath the amendment number four, but openly we also have the right to not be mobbed harassed, hazed, stolen from, and literally manhandled at every moment of our life by police or anyone in the military or any strategy because why it dishonors all the men and women who have literally died for protecting those lawful rights from the foreign infidels that would love to steal our country blind, take your house, come here illegally, immorally, and think they have the right to take our property from us because they think America is a free-for-all, easy for the taking. No, we're just mentally dumb about what people do because we don't have the fight every single day for our lives like they do in foreign countries. And practically, we do have governments that are supposed to honor our lawful rights and not turn America into the state of Nazism and other type of centralism and other type of dictatorships, if you will, that happen across the rest of the world. But openly, I'm talking about real life, am I not? Or are you still so dumb in your soul that you don't realize what I'm saying is that practically, when you participate in the mobbing or the strategy of ruining a man's life, you have just committed something like co common likened to Hitler doing with his mobs and troops and people. They literally thought they had the right to decide who was worthy and who was not. It's kind of like that little kid's Dr. Seuss book with stars upon stars, that those with the stars were good and those that didn't have them were not. And then the entire Seussical book produced the fact that it was all a ridiculous thing in the first place. That every single person, and I forget what those little creatures were called in the Seuss book, were perfectly worth the Lord's time in this world. Now, practically, there are people that want to hear from God, but then once they hear from God, they literally shut him off from their lives. I've heard of prophetic people telling people how to avoid illness, how to avoid harm, and literally once they hear all that stuff, they say, oh, thanks, but no thanks, God. No longer interested in hearing you tell me how to put my life in the right place. You see, putting, putting, your, putting yourself in the right place with God is much more important than putting yourself in the rights with other people sometimes. Because when it's all over with, when the song is last being sung, when that traveling man comes to take you home to the heaven that literally does exist in that spiritual realm that I can show you energy forces for, doesn't really mean I'm a scientific magician. It literally means that just maybe there's something in this world you know nothing about. We used to talk about a network marketing that people don't know what they don't know. The reality is that there are plenty of men and women, old and young, who don't know the laws of this land and think they have the lawful right to get away with things that are actually illegal, immoral, and illicit behavior. We have people who think they have the right to police other people's lives. 
by infiltrating their baggage, which is actually immoral in front of God because God put those things in those bags. God produced that person's money to buy those things. If you believe in a God that gives you everything in this world, you see, we can't take in some Bible verses and then leave the others alone. We can't modify the scripture because it's already been modified. We don't have all the chapters of the Bible, and I'd really like to see a Catholic Bible. I'd really like to see the other aspects of God. I'd really like to read those other scriptures. I'd really like to hear those other storytellers tell their version of events. But openly, we have a religious right that doesn't want us to have the realities of the spirit world. We've got Catholic priests who know how to get rid of demons, which do literally exist in people because they allow them to enter possibly, but because they're at risk or because Lord God has said, take that one, because we need to prove that we exist in this world. But I'm talking about the Halloween movies now, aren't I? And who the hell likes Halloween? Not me anymore. It was a celebration of the harvest. It was a celebration of life. It was a celebration of plants and animals and other things. And it's now been literally destroyed by the atheists and the haters of life who want to produce the worst film of the centuries to scare the living daylights out of us. And yet people mock people who have fears. I have a sister who literally talks about how she's not going to play into fear Really, she's also stupid about the people around her life who might practically try to house-sit her out of her own home. But openly, we don't have laws yet in Indiana to protect those rights. In Arizona, people can squat in your house and literally kick you out. How fucking dumb is that? Forgive the language, Lord, I didn't mean to swear like that. But isn't that illicit behavior? It's theft of a home. It's actually federally illegal to steal something that doesn't belong to you. Yet for some reason, because they are homeless, they have this right to do this. If you go on holiday to your other home or your second home that you produce for yourself. You see, we've gotten so out of whack in our own laws of human rights that people know how to steal from us. The people who steal from us literally create a rage in people. There's a rage that brews in people for the theft of their lawful rights. But here's the difference. The theft of my lawful rights are not the theft of your lawful rights. The theft of your lawful rights are not the theft of my lawful rights. Mark's law is something I'm working on. Mark was my brother. The word mark means I'm making a mark on something which I learned in a metaphysical class with a woman who is for the most part on God's path. But openly, she taught me a lot about the signs of God, and it's her little namesake that she deserves the right to, that she's produced some video on, and she's worth the class time for a little while. If you want to learn how God speaks to people beyond what you recognize in this world, the minute you start listening, you'll go, oh my God, I had no idea I could get this much help for my life. But people make this mistake of thinking that they are above the law. They openly make the mistake of thinking they're above God's law, which is I create life for other people. I open doors for people. I put people together for a reason. But there are men and there are women and there are even children trained to believe that they have the lawful right to interfere with God's plans for people's lives and people's lessons and people's soul talk in this world. Let's think about the soul a moment. I can talk for as long as I want to. Someone will probably illegally edit my creative work, but openly, I'm going to talk on this now. If we have a soul, and only the soul goes to heaven as we're all taught in every religion of the land, of the world, then why are people so worried about physicality and illness? Mental illness may not always be mental illness, but there's a physician who thinks he's above God who's going to prescribe things and do things that might actually damage the lessons that the Lord is putting into that man's life or woman's life or any other person who's around that individual. You see, we forget that the Lord God made it all for a reason, that the Lord God is giving certain lessons through the creation of certain types of children with special needs, but openly we also have chemistry being put in our food that is not right, that is literally destroying the body the cells, and other things. But people love how it tastes, so they do it. I literally had an illicit Meyer worker try to tell me that Coca-Cola companies used to put cocaine in their Coca-Cola. I have no idea whether or not that's true or not. 
I'm not a historian about carbonated products. I can't drink them. But openly, I thought it was a poor marketing strategy of an employee of a firm like that to illegally talk about a company she does not represent. And what I mean by illegally is that she was representing Meyer in that moment of time of customer service. She should have not have done that. She should have been worrying about the fact that the machines that they're selling drinks out of aren't working correctly, or the food that's in their vats are not quite hot enough to the point that someone might get ill. But openly, underpaid workers don't really care about other people's bodies and cells, and that is immoral behavior. Because if you don't care about my bodies and cells in terms of my right to be safe with my bodies and cells in my own decisions of what I'm going to eat, then maybe you don't have the same rights. In this land of the Lord, that God reigns, thankfully still, in a way we have to understand that the people of the world have the right to decide what they're going to do for their life, what they're going to produce, and if we participate in mobbing or stalking or stealing from them, then we have violated God's highest law, which is, I am Lord God and you are not in this person's life.